ring side of life. But today, we get inside the ring with Hickey Butler. Hickey, it's wonderful to catch up with you again here at the Hotbox Gym. Um, we moving towards the end of the year, it's a bit of a Christmas break and things like that, but 2018 has been massive for you. Tell us about your year in competition. Yeah, um, um, it's probably been the best year of my professional boxing career. Um, won three world titles in one night, so it's been amazing. Won the ring magazine belt. Um, no, it's been good and you guys are going to have a Christmas break. I'm going to be training over Christmas, um, fighting the 31st of December again, hopefully. So far, so good. Yeah, and I've been nominated for Sportsman of the Year and Sports Star of the Year, so it's, it's a great great year for me, it's been a great year, and I'm, I'm just very blessed. Heki, the whole point of our documentary series is to get a little bit more information about our sportsmen and women in South Africa. Where did it all start? Oh, well, I, I grew up in the Newlands area, West Strand. Um, I, yeah, but my mom, my dad, and my little sister have always been supporting me. Um, I, I wouldn't have boxed if it wasn't for my, for my mom and my dad because they got me into boxing. Because when I was little, I, I couldn't play. I'm too small for rugby. Um, like I said, I'm not fast enough for soccer. And like, no one's going to throw me over cricket ball, please. I don't want to get into the cricket ball. So, and I hated losing too much. So if someone told my parents I'm going to do a sport where if I lost, it would be my own fault. Um, and my dad boxed, so we chose boxing. And yeah, I fell in love and I'm still doing it. Yeah, I'm not still loving it. How many years? Sure. 21 years, I've been boxing 21 years because I started when I was 7 or 8 years old. I'm 30 years old now, so it's, it's been going good and I've been enjoying every second of it. You know, they always say that uh, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. It's not a job. You know, I definitely, I definitely love what I do. Um, I hate the training though, it breaks you down, but I, I enjoy it. I enjoy being fit, I enjoy being healthy, and, and I enjoy getting into the ring. Uh, to be under that pressure, under that, all the eyes are on you. I mean, Especially when, when everyone expects you to lose, just gives that extra little bit of motivation like I did, like I did in my last fight. Um, you know, I just love it. I honestly love what I do. Heggy, mums sometimes get uh, concerned and worried because boxing is a contact sport. I'm sure it was quite difficult for your mum to come to terms with. Yeah, well, when I started boxing, she was very scared actually. She, she got very nervous, um, but she's gotten used to it now. She's, I think she's more used to it than me now. But um, like someone asked my wife the same question. My wife said, um, I don't get nervous when she goes to work, it's her job, and she doesn't get nervous when I go into the ring. I know she does get nervous and butterflies, but it's, it's part of the game, and they both understand it. They, that's what I do, it's what I love. So tell us more about your high school sweetheart. Oh, we actually met in high school, and we never dated in high school. Just kiss Callum now and then around the corners. Um, I wish she was just too young for me. Then after school, um, her best friend actually said, she wants to come and visit me, the two of them. And I said, oh no, come, of course, you can make turn. Yeah, and we, and we hooked off and, and we just started talking and just it, it just stuck. And I've been married for five years, so we've been together, together I think for eight, seven or eight years. So it's, now I'm very happy, very lucky, very blessed. Oh, that's so beautiful. What is, what is she to you in the relationship? No, she's my rock. She, she's my everything. Um, she, like I said, when people phone me for an interview or I have to do something, I say, no, first speak to the boss, my wife, because she does the, the, the everything for me. She make, makes my diary. Um, she makes sure that when I when we get ready for a fight, that I diet, that I eat the right food. She diets with me. We eat together. We train together. And this makes she pushes me so I can train harder. She makes sure if I, I must get up at three or four in the morning to go and run, she wakes me up. She sets her alarm. Um, but yeah, she's she's just very supportive and she pushes me just to do better and want to do better. Um, do you feel that she's part of your success? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I felt that, I, that I've gotten better since I've known her because she's pushed, always pushed me even harder. Um, and she's always believed in me. She's, she's always said that you can do it, you have to do a bit more. She's just, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, she's special. She's special in what she does and how she treats me and the way she does everything. So like that, everything is just perfect for me. Like the last week, most fighters would know that, that with the last week of weight pudding is terrible. We don't speak, we don't, we don't talk, we don't do anything. And, and you don't want to ask us if you want to eat something because we get very grumpy. And she understands that and she tries to make the last week the best week of her of my life for me every single time. Eki, a lot of people see um, what happens on TV, at the big fights, but not behind the scenes. Being a sportsman is hard work, there's a lot of ups, there's a lot of downs, sometimes more downs than ups. You always need somebody to go back home to tell you that it's okay and you can continue doing this. Yeah, most definitely. Um, like two fights ago, I lost, I lost everything. I lost in the, in the Philippines, I thought, I'm done. Mm -hmm. um, then I got the opportunity to fight the Japanese and it turned around again. But um, 
you need the support system. You need, even if you don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever, you've got your coaches, you've got your family, you need, you've got friends. You need to make um, the right, meet the right people, have the right people around you in this type of game to, or in this type, in any type of sport to um, have that support base. I'm lucky enough to also have great trainers. Ikram, who's my, my strength and conditioning coach, we, we're close friends, we're very good friends, and he's my coach. Um, Colin's like a dad to me, Bushy's like a He's like a dad to me. These guys train me, they, they do everything for me and they will, I'll do everything for them. And the thing is what I do, I have to trust my trainers with my life. Absolutely. I step in the ring, they know what's best for me. But um, yes, you have to, you, you get support systems from, from different places and I'm lucky to have my wife that's, like I said, my rock. Hecky, I understand that you had quite a few spiders and snakes as pets back in the day. What is it, eight? Yeah, but when, when I met my wife and when we moved into our own house, Finally, she said, there's no way they're coming with, getting rid of them. I no, just, just, she, she got a bit upset when I had to give them rabbits and things, because she likes rabbits, it was a bit cruel. But um, yeah, it was just it was too much for me. And my spiders, they came out sometimes and she didn't want to come into the house. So I had to get rid of them as well. I just have my iguana and my dogs, actually my wife's dogs, more than mine. But yeah, no, I love, I love all types of animals. I'm, I'm, I'm a big animal lover. It's just the way I am, I don't know. <laughs> love weird things. <laughs> And I will love your tattoos. Tell us a bit more about them. I love weird things, exactly. Um, <laughs> well, I started with my pit bull on my back, and one of my followers, boxing followers, he said his daughter does tattoos. I must go to her, and she started sp sponsoring me. Um, and I'm actually sponsored by Jaded Inca. They do my tattoos for free. New one on my calf that I recently did with them. Yeah, and it's, and I, it's a bit of an addiction. Um, they say if you get one, it's okay. If you get the second one, you're going to have a problem. It's, prob it's really the truth. Because I got one, I thought that was going to be my only one. When I got my second one, I'm covered now. I just love it. I love being different. That's why my fights, I colour my hair, I change it. I like, love to be do something different and be a bit different. So I don't know the meaning behind some of them. Well, some of them not really don't have too much meaning. Like um, Papa and Olivia, my arm, that's my mom and dad in my oh, eyes. Cute. Then the rocket is my wife, Roxy Rocket. Then I have my sister there. The little, uh, the little Mickey Mouse there. Oh, how that's cute. Mickey Mouse. His name is Michaela. Everyone calls her Mickey Mouse. Yeah, so that's some of them are meaning of my, actually my, the 12 on my side, which is my favorite number, my wife's favorite number, and we got, we got engaged on the 12, 12, 12. Beautiful. Yeah, it depends. Sometimes I just like what I do. I just enjoy <laughs> getting a tattoo. Um, yeah, that's most of mine. I don't have all the meaning, but I don't really care. It's, I enjoy, enjoy what I have, yeah. Hecky, you're probably the most colorful boxer that I know. You've colored your hair so many different colors. What's the meaning behind that? Well, I did it for one fight. Um, after the fight, people asked me, what are you going to do for the next one? What are you doing for your next one? I went to the hairdresser and she said, I saw your fight with the colours in the hair. Because she didn't colour, I yeah. coloured it myself. And she said, no, we're going to keep on doing this. And she did it and it stuck. It's mm. just been going on. Um, I haven't been doing it so much of, of, of late because I keep on fighting overseas. It's a bit hard to go to a hairdresser at that time. But yeah, no, it's just like I said, it's just to be different. Be a dude, something a bit funky. Part of I, your identity now. Yeah, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy people enjoy it. So that's mm -hmm. if the people enjoy it, then I'm happy. That, and that's what your sport is all about. I mean, you're not only boxing for yourself, but you're boxing for all the fans. Yeah, you know, the fans are the people that pay you. If the fans are coming to watch you, you're not going to get paid. Um, that's how the promoters make money and the promoters pay you. Yeah. Um, and if TV, if people don't want to watch you, TV's not going to get involved. So you're going to even less money. So it's <laughs> all of the people that watch you. Um, I think the biggest problem with me, I'm not a big mouth, I don't get into people's faces, so I need to be a bit different, try different things so people can watch me, I think. Um, but as long as they enjoy what I do, I hope people enjoy my fights and I'm happy. Absolutely, I think everybody does. You're here at the Hot Box Gym, you've been with Colin probably your whole career. Um, he's made you into the fighter that you are. What would you say are your strengths? Sure, um, I think Norm, most, most of all it's my fitness, because um, mm -hmm. if I'm not fit, I don't get into the ring. Um, Colin will tell me if I'm not fit, so um, that's why I have guys like Ikram yeah, who's my strength and conditioning coach and they get me fit, they get me ready. If Fusi can't get you fit neither, then there's nothing wrong with you. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's my fitness, my fitness and I listen to what they tell me. I listen to the game plan and I follow the game plan to a T. That's one of the most important things in boxing and I think I believe that's my strong points, that I listen and my fitness. What would you say was your toughest fight in your career? Um, I've been asked that a few times and there's only always been one answer. That was my, I think my 16th fight when I fought against my first world title actually, when I fought against Juanito Rubilo. The guy had 80 fights, I had 16. Yeah. Um, the things that, that he knew of what to do, like hold you, each behind the head, each with the elbow, each with the head. Um, and that was probably my hardest fight still, till this day. 
do you feel it made you a better fighter? Yeah, definitely. Um, we had a rematch after that because there was a bit of a dispute at this, I don't know how that game got that, the first fight. Um, and the second one, I, I beat him hands down because I knew what to expect and what to do and made definitely made me a better fighter. Heck, it's something that I've certainly noticed after each and every one of your fights. If there's any mistakes that you've made or if you've lost a fight, they're already rectified. Those mistakes are already rectified in the next fight. It shows what a hard worker you are. Yeah, the thing is with, with any sport, especially with boxing, you always remember it for your last fight. So you always have to be better than your last fight. You have to, um, and there's always, in boxing, you can never know everything. Mm. It's, it's literally the truth. Because I learn something new every day. And I like to learn, because you have to improve in this game. You have to improve every day of your life. Um, I get punched in the face. I don't want to get punched in the face. I, that's why you have to get improve. You have to improve yourself, get better. Um, and with the guys, with the trainers that I have around me, I, I can't do that. I believe in them, they believe in me. Um, you have to want to improve and you have to be want, wanting, want to get better every time with, with whatever you do in life. Um, you want to improve yourself and that's what I believe, improving myself and improving my boxing career. Um, what's the next fight on the card? Well, um, so far that I've, that I've heard is that I'm fight defending my titles um, the 31st of December in Japan again. Um, I can't wait, it's going to be nice, I enjoy the country. It's not South Africa, unfortunately, <laughs> but at least I'm fighting. Speaking of hard work, um, what is the process like when you're getting ready for the next fight? When does it start? It normally starts 13, 12, 13 weeks out, we start the training. Eight weeks, like today is eight weeks out, we start full out hard training. The last six weeks is killing it. Mm. Um, some days after training, I sit in my car for like half an hour, 20 minutes, because I can't drive home, I'm too sore. Just to, to rest and relax. Um, what would you like to tell the young fighters that want to get into the sport? No, um, if you believe it and you want it, and you, you honestly, it's more than more than that. If you if you really want to do it, that's the most important thing. I don't care if you believe you're the greatest fighter in the world. I've seen, like I said earlier, there's guys that are more talented than me that didn't make it. You have to be wanted, and if you want it, you have to work for it. And I believe that South Africa, if the guys that I've seen fighting amateur really put their minds that we can have a world champion in every weight division. Um, so just believe in yourself, work hard, dedicate yourself to the sport, and, and push yourself. You have to believe that you're better than everybody else. Um, you don't have to say it, just believe it and work harder than them to, to prove it. Peggy, something I've definitely noticed about you is that you humble, you show humility uh, in all your fights, even running up to the fights. Do you feel that's been part of your success story? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would never talk bad about any other fighter or go to say, oh, I'm going to knock you. I'm just not like that. Um, and I think it's where I was brought up. Um, I still think my dad's going to slap you on the ear if I say something like that. Um, yeah, but I don't like to be that, that way. It's not who I am. Um, be humble. Be yourself. Be what you want to be. But you, do, you don't have to be a big mouth to achieve. It's it's the work you do in the gym. That's what gets you. Same as any other sport. If you don't go and train for a rugby match, you're not going to play a rugby match. You won't make it. You're not going to get picked for the spring box or whatever the case may be. Um, so it's the work you do at home, the work you do in the gym. That's that's work that, that gets you through. Heki, thank you so much for speaking to us. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you, uh, the man behind uh, the Iron Fist. So thanks once again. I know you have a lot of training still to do, so we're not going to keep you any longer. Uh, let's let you go to your trainer, Vusi. Thanks so much for the interview again. Yeah.